I, I'm, I'm riding the Alabama Crimson Tide this week in Knoxville. The atmosphere is going to be crazy. It's going to be an unbelievable football game. And for personal reasons, personal yeah. reasons, I don't want to hear that damn uh, – what's that What's that uh, Smoky Mountain song they sing all, down there all the time? Rocky Top. Oh, yeah. Rocky Top. Gosh, I, I hear that in my nightmares, Rich. Golly. I need yeah. Alabama to go wreck shop. What do you say, kids? Oh, it's going to be fun. I'll tell you what. Oh, what's exciting least, to see. Bro, so just being on the West Coast, like you get accustomed to certain games being big. Tennessee, Bama hadn't been big in my eyes since like Lane Kiffin almost beat Bama if the field goal is not blocked. Like, so it's fun to see a different rivalry pop up. Like that, that's kind of exciting. I think we're going to talk to Jabari right. small. Uh, we're gonna have his interview with Greg Waddell here in a few minutes, but let's stay on this game. Game day is going to be there. We're all going to be glued to it. Um, right. When big games happen, right. We've all been a part of them, right? I'm going to start with you. Cause you're the most recent player. You're the youngest one of the trio here. When big games happen like this, you've been on the favorite side going on the road. Right. What do you think the mindset of Bama is? And what do you think like Bryce Young could do if he does end up going? Or if he doesn't go, that impact of being on the road will be? Yeah, I think it's one of those things is being steady. I, don't, I think saving, knowing the operation there and having played a big-time program like, like in that caliber, it's business as usual. I, I wouldn't say they probably got up any – more than they have the rest of the season. I feel like that's how Saban operates. I feel like he's getting those guys up as much for uh, La Tech as he is for this game. But you do you do feel the sense of urgency or like the fifth, the sense of importance uh, to put in probably a little more work because uh, you know it's going to be a lot more hectic. And then just attention to detail. Games like this, especially if it's a game we all think it could be a real heavyweight battle matchup, uh, it's going to come down to the details throughout the week. So it's probably a girl, emphasis on like the plan down this week and like the details because this game's gonna come down to it um but yeah man, I, I think like a lot of people on the outside obviously make put a lot of noise on it when you're when you're inside the building of these programs i feel like each team like you you walk around like you you kind of if you don't think you've been there or you know you can do it i feel like that's like a false sense of confidence so you kind of walk around like hey this is what we do so you come to get that's why you come to bama and play in big time games yeah, well, that's what they're selling in Tennessee, too, as well. So, Clint, for you, right. like, flip it to the other side. Like, you didn't – no offense. Like, you, we, neither one of us played at the powerhouse, you know? Hey, just put it out there, yo. I got thick skin, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Penn and Arkansas weren't the powers that, that they had been at, at some point in, in our illustrious respective histories. Uh, yeah. But when we were there, we didn't feel that. So, we were the ones hosting. Like, I remember top two or three Miami coming in every other year when we were playing back in the day, you had your moments. What do you think it's like being Tennessee now that the, like the star, <clears throat> the lights, the, like it is a different vibe than they've had in hell since time. Bill Fulmer. Like this has been a minute. Yeah. Well, unfortunately I, I felt the wrath of some of those teams and, and, uh, and they even gave them a couple of handouts. They, they, what they ought to do is Tennessee ought to send my ass one of them, uh, them Brown McDonald's papers bag, paper bags that they were using <laughs> and recruiting a couple years ago. When got back up. In, Hello. That's the least they could do is send one to, to, to me. You know what I mean? Hell, I, I mean, that's the least they could do. No, but look, I, I tell you what, I, I think the vibe is definitely different at Tennessee and I think the difference in this ball game is Tennessee believes that they belong in this ball game. And, and I don't know that anybody else truly believed that they belong in the ball game and had the product to back it up. You know what I mean? Like, yo, I look at, at Arkansas and when Arkansas played Alabama, I believe Arkansas thought they had a chance to win the ball game. Don't get me wrong. But the truth of the matter is, is Arkansas's defense was one of the worst defenses in the country. And everybody knew that Bryce Young was going to torch him. And he did that until he got hurt, right? I think you look at Tennessee and you got them coming to your place. There's going to be 102,000 on their toes. And I'm telling you, I've been there. I, they couldn't hear. My guard couldn't hear me audible in the first couple of drives of the ball game, right? It's one of the loudest places in America. It's unique because it's one of a handful of universities that have 102,000 um, seat capacity. So that, that puts it in a league of its own. And I think when you get down to the product of this thing, you're talking about one of the top offenses in the country. I think number two scoring offense in the country in Tennessee versus the number six scoring offense in the country in, in Alabama, I believe. 
and and they believe that they can go toe to toe with those guys. And when you look at the defenses, I'll argue the defense. Alabama's obviously better, but I don't think it's a it's a a defense that the gap is big enough where they're going to overcome. 102,000 in Knoxville, home field advantage, playing with tempo, all of the things that Tennessee can bring to the table. So I think Tennessee is the first team that Bama's faced this year that really believes and has a product that tells me, you, and D, all of us, that right. they got a chance to beat these boys. You know, there's no glaring say- deficiencies. That was, my, that was my take, too, on just, like, looking at the landscape of this game because you see Bama – they struggle with Texas, and I don't think Texas really believed. And maybe who knows? Quinn Ewers could have played the rest of that game. Seeing what he's done, maybe that could have been the game to upset him. They struggled then. They struggled with Arkansas for a moment. You know, last week they struggled with A and M. To me, this is the first team going into the game where it's like they expect to win this game and play with them. It's not going to be a surprise through the game. Tennessee's up. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Um, I, I love the phrase that I, I've learned years ago from, from coaches. You've heard it. It's hoping versus knowing. So, so I'll tell you a story. I don't know how true this is, but this is, this is the lore of it. Go back to OU, USC, national title game down in Miami. The day before the game, Bob Stoops is doing media, and they're talking about like, yeah, I hope it rains. Maybe they'll slip. Maybe I'll slow Reggie down. And I, he would, could have been tongue in cheek. I don't know the context of it, but that so, something of that effect is what was said. And the way SC spun it and Pete Carroll spun it to his team was like, "Yo, these guys are hoping that it rains. They're hoping that we fall. We they hope that they get the PI call. They hope, they hope, they hope. Let me tell you what we do. We know, and, and that's what I'm really curious to see from Tennessee because we saw what they did last week. I turned on that LSU game in my hotel in Tucson, and I'm like, "Hold on, where's this game at?" <laughs> like like i was like did they flip uniforms because i saw the what you know and it just blew my and that was the first time where i was like to put up like to put the beat down as they did on lsu that got me to notice for the first time and simultaneously i'd be curious what you think clint i don't think this year georgia bama ohio state clemson i don't think anybody is like in a class of their own I just don't. And like, I could see the playoff coming down to like multiple one loss teams in terms of who gets an invite. I could see Tennessee doing it this weekend. They got a vet quarterback. He's been around the tempo to your point is a thing. We'll see how Bryce is feeling. I hope he's good to go, but I still, even if he does go, I don't think Alabama is like, yep, they're going to roll in like 2020. And just roll like no big deal. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Yoga. I, I think I, I've always said this, and, and and a lot of people disagree, but but I just I, I'll, I'll it's a heel. I'm a down. Tennessee is one of the teams in the East, and don't I don't know how the hell they do it, but even from my days all the way moving forward, good good seasons, bad seasons, yo, they've always got dudes. They've always got Jimmys and Joes that can play with Georgia, that can play with Alabama. I'm telling you, it it goes like this. You got Georgia, Florida, Tennessee in the east. Always got dudes, right? And in in the west, you got Auburn, you got LSU, and you got Alabama. Always have dudes. It's never never a a player problem, like a talent problem or a depth problem with those universities. Um, that they can never lean on the crutch that Kentucky can lean on and Arkansas can lean on. And really, that's one reason why I'm so hard on A&M because they should be in that damn category. Right. I mean, ultimately, they should be in that category. And so Tennessee has those dudes. Now they got a play caller that's a game changer. They got a quarterback that fits the system so beautifully. Right. And 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 they've they've just they've played the transfer portal. Perfect. They've I mean, it's, it's just a perfect storm. I don't know if they can keep up with Georgia and Alabama, but damn it, it sure looks good in, in the lead in to it and, and on paper for sure. We're dropping our merch. We got to start calling Underwood Daddy Brad. But I'm a big odd guy.
Breaking news. The Field of 68 has an online store, and it's your one-stop shop for the latest and greatest merch in college basketball and college football. You can find shirts to support your favorite team, make fun of your rival team, or boast Field of 68 catchphrases like Daddy Brad, Cussing and Discussing, and the Star Heels. Go to www.fieldof68.shop today and enter promo code TOUCHDOWN for 20% off at checkout. 